Hello, and welcome to our friends with the Aurora Library's Let's Garden Together program. I'm Luann Aiken with Tagawa Gardens in Centennial, Colorado. We're here today to talk about gardening for beginners. Whether you're a brand new gardener or just new to gardening here in Colorado, there are some basic do's and don'ts I'd like to share with you to help make your garden the best it can be. Let's jump right in. Any conversation about gardening shouldn't start with the plants. It should start with the soil. And in case you hadn't heard, the soil in Colorado could use some help. That's where compost comes in. Whether you make it at home or buy it, this stuff is a gardener's friend. Compost is fully decayed organic matter, like leaves and shredded twigs. Working two to three inches of compost into the existing soil in a planting hole or even into an entire bed will help open up heavy clay soil or help sandy soil retain moisture. Don't layer it, mix it with the existing soil down to where your plant's roots will eventually be. Those roots will thank you. So you've improved your soil and now it's time to run to the garden center and buy up a whole bunch of plants, right? Well, right, if you first learn this little mantra. Always put the right plants in the right place. For example, if you put a sun-loving plant like daisies in the shade, they'll be starving for the sunshine they need to make big, beautiful flowers. So why bother? And if you put a shade-loving plant like impatience in the full sun, be prepared to watch them fry. It's not just the light you need to think about when you're choosing what to plant. Take this sweet, soft little pine tree, for example. Wouldn't it look just great right next to your front door? Well, maybe not when it grows to be 25 feet tall and 10 feet wide and gobbles that front door right up. Just for the record, annuals like petunias and geraniums are the plants that give you instant color for one season and then die. Well cared for perennials like this pincushion flower should come back year after year. So now it really is time to plant. Here are some tips and tricks. Water your plants well when you get them home. It helps them adjust to the stress of moving to their new surroundings. Don't plant them right away. Put them in a sheltered place for a couple of days, away from direct sun, so they can adjust to the wind, Colorado's dry air, and temperature fluctuations outside of the garden center. And save those plant labels. They can be a huge help down the road. Once it's time to plant, make sure that each plant's finished soil level is the same as it was in its pot. No higher and no lower. Let's talk mulch. Mulch is usually made from shredded tree branches or bark. Pea gravel can be used as mulch too. A two to three inch layer of mulch will help conserve moisture, suppress weeds, and it gives your garden a nice finished look. I let a few inches of fallen pine needles serve as the mulch in some of my secondary beds that I rarely replant. And in my vegetable garden, I use straw as a mulch, knowing that at the end of the season, I can work it into the soil and it will decompose. For beginning gardeners and even for some veterans, proper watering routines don't always get as much attention as they should. One of the most common watering mistakes is watering too frequently and not deeply enough. For example, I have some pepper plants growing in this big nursery pot. Giving them 10 or 15 seconds of water just isn't enough. I want to keep watering until I see the water beginning to come out of the drainage holes at the bottom of the pot. That way I know the roots down low are getting a good deep drink. This approach is the same with so many other plants, including lawns, many trees, shrubs, and perennials. You can check the soil in the ground or in a big pot like this with a moisture meter if you're not sure, but watering deeply and less frequently will give you healthier plant roots and you might save money on your water bill too. Feeding the various plants throughout your garden and landscape doesn't have to be a mystery. Let's take a look at the basics. Fertilizer packages list the concentration of the three most important plant nutrients. Generally speaking, N is for nitrogen, which helps make healthy foliage. P is for phosphorus, which stimulates blossoms and roots. K is for potassium, which promotes a plant's overall vitality. There are plenty of fertilizers to choose from. You can go with an all-purpose fertilizer, which is fine much of the time, or a specially formulated plant food for specific results. Always follow the directions on the package. Too much fertilizer can be worse than too little. One of the most important things to get right in your garden or landscape is the use of pesticides. The word itself, pesticide, covers a lot of ground. For example, an insecticide is used to control insect pests. Insecticides come in either organic or synthetic formulas. 
While the organic products are generally less toxic, both organic and synthetic insecticides need to be used with great care, exactly according to the directions on the package. It's the law. Remember, the vast majority of insects are either beneficial or completely harmless. A diversity of insect life is the sign of a healthy garden. Unless you know something's harmful, why not just leave it alone? Case in point, say you find this weird little creature right where your plants are showing damage. But if you kill it just because you can, you've taken out one of the gardener's best friends. Both the larvae and the adult stages of ladybugs were just doing their job, eating the aphids that caused the damage in the first place. While insecticides are aimed at insects, Herbicides are used to kill unwanted vegetation, like weeds, but you have to follow the directions to the letter. If herbicides are misused, perhaps applied when it's windy or too hot, they can easily drift and damage or even kill desirable plants. Fungicides are the pesticides used to control fungal diseases on plants. There are several organic fungicides to choose from. Again, they should be used only according to the directions. And so you know, there is research to indicate that the use of fungicides on blossoms can be harmful to honeybees. And one other thing, you spend so much time creating a beautiful yard and landscape, spend a little more time maintaining it. For example, you want to sharpen or replace your lawnmower blade at least once a season. And don't forget to deadhead. Every time you take off a fading flower, another one will be right behind it, so you can keep the flowers coming. And never be afraid to ask for help either from your favorite garden center or from the Master Gardening Office in your county. Good luck. Now, let's get gardening together. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and find others like it on our Tagawa Gardens YouTube channel. Also, find us on Facebook and Instagram.